Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today I'm going to do a quick video on the Gini coefficient and the Lorenz curve, talking about how to draw the Lorenz curve and calculate the Gini coefficient. I'm going to do some example problems and just explain the intuition of how this works. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So just to think about what the Gini coefficient and the Lorenz curve are trying to do is basically we're trying to measure inequality within a country or society or a different region. And what we're saying is suppose that we have two different distributions of wealth. So on the left, we have a more equal distribution. And so the size of the houses suppose represents sort of the distribution of wealth. And so this is pretty equal. This looks actually almost exactly equal where most of the houses are about the same size. Whereas on the right, we've got one gigantic household which has a lot of wealth. And then the rest of these houses are relatively small. They don't own that much wealth between them. And we're basically thinking about a way of how we can measure this, how we can measure inequality within society with a number, with a Lorenz curve, with sort of a ratio or what we call the Gini coefficient. And so as we're thinking about this, we could say, okay, well, what would it mean for a perfectly equal society with no inequality at all? Well, that would mean as you start adding up the population, so we have a sort of ticker where we're increasing the amount of the population that we're thinking about, and at the same time, we're increasing the amount of wealth, then we would say, okay, well, if it was exactly equal, then 10% of the population would control 10% of the wealth, 20% of the population would control 20% of the wealth, all the way to 99% of the population controlling 99% of the wealth. Of course, our two endpoints are sort of set. 0% of the population means you're not including any of the wealth because there's no people. And if you're looking at 100% of the population, then of course you're looking at 100% of the wealth in a country, in a society, whatever sort of geographical region you're looking at. So now if we were to graph that, if we were to graph that perfectly equal setting, we would start at 0, 0, and we would have 10, 10, 20, 20, all the way up to 100, 100, and so it would be a straight line, it would be a perfectly equal line. And for that other example, where we said that one household controlled a lot of the stuff and the rest of the population had like the tiny bit that's left, well, then you would say, okay, well, maybe 80% of the population controls like 35% of the wealth. And then that last 20% of the population controls the remaining 65% of the wealth. And so they would be way up here and you would have this unequal line in green. And so what we're saying is we can use the fact that this unequal line is not exactly on this 45 degree line. So the green line and the purple line are not on top of each other. And we can use basically this area between them to think about what the inequality index or what this inequality ratio should be. And that's the whole idea behind a Gini coefficient. So again, this unequal line is what we call the Lorenz curve. That's based on the data. This perfectly equal line, this 45 degree line, is basically saying this is the perfectly equal sort of situation and we're comparing what the data actually looks like to sort of this ideal or perfectly equal world. And so the Gini coefficient ultimately is going to be basically the area A, so the area between the purple curve and the green curve divided by this area plus the area under the Lorenz curve. And so that's gonna make it such that we're always in zero to one because this is a ratio. And so this is gonna be a plus right here. Now, one thing that we can do is because we're using percentages, we can turn this into numbers where this becomes zero and this becomes one, which means that the area A plus B, which is the area under our perfectly equal line, is always gonna be equal to one half. So the Gini coefficient is going to be A divided by one half or two times A, or two times the area between the perfectly equal line and our Lorenz curve or the distribution of wealth based on the data. And so if you have a discrete function or discrete points for each population, percentage of population and the percent of wealth they control, then you can use basically a trapezoid formula to think about, well, for each data point you have, you can calculate this as the area of the bases. Normally this would be one half times the area of the bases or the average of the bases but because we're gonna multiply it by two, then we don't need that average. We can just do this formula right here. And I'm gonna show you an example and apply this formula to find the Gini coefficient. So here's our example problem where we've got population values of 0, 20, 50, 60, 100. 
and associated percentages of income or wealth of 0, 10, 31, 40, 100. And so we're just going to graph the Lorenz curve and we're going to use that formula that you just saw and we're going to figure out what the Gini coefficient is. So again, I've just plotted the formula to find the area under that curve right here. And so if we think about what we're going to do, here's the Lorenz curve, here's 2010, here is 0.5 and 0.31 approximately, here's 0.6 and 0.4, and here, of course, is 100, 100. And so what I'm going to do is we're just going to say 1 minus this area right here. And so since it's the sum, that's just the fancy way of saying I'm going to add up all these boxes. So I'm going to do it separately, and I'm going to color code them. So for example, we're going to take the 1. We're going to subtract. And this is going to be 0.2 minus 0, because this is 0 to 0.2, times 0.10 plus 0, because we started here and we went to 0.10. The purple point, what we're going to have is 0.5 minus 0.2 because the width of this box is 0.3. The height of this box using the midpoint formula using that trapezoid is just going to be 0.41, which is just going to be 0.31 plus 0.10. The blue dot, again, we're going from 0.5 to 0.6, so that's the width of 0.1. The average height here is just going to be 0.71 because that's going to be 0.31 and 0.4. Or if you want to think about it this way, you can think about 0.31 and 0.4. We're taking the midpoint of this guy. And so since we don't need to take the average, we can just add them together. And finally, for orange dot, our width is 0.6 to 1 or 0.4. The average height would be 1.4 over 2, but we don't need that average. So we're just going to keep the 1.4. And then when we add these all together and we do 1 minus the sum of these guys, we're going to get a Gini coefficient of 0 0.226. So again, if any of that is confusing, feel free to put that in the comment section below. But now we're going to move on and do an example where we don't have this sort of nice straight line. We're going to have a function with a curve and we're going to use an integral to figure out what the Gini coefficient is because what's going to happen is we're basically going to apply this formula to an infinite number of boxes and that's going to turn into an integral. So now suppose instead of giving you populations and incomes, I just told you that the amount of income that a certain percentage controls is just equal to that percentage squared. And so now we still have our 45 degree line, we still have our area A, which is our area between the perfect equality and our Lorenz curve. Lorenz curve is in purple. Area B is the area under the Lorenz curve. And we're still finding our Gini coefficient as A over A plus B. And again, our A plus B is still one half, so it's still two times A. And if I think about A, this area right here is just one half, which is this guy right here, minus area B, which is the area under the curve, which means that two times A is just one minus two B. And I know that B is the area under the curve or the integral from zero to one of P squared which means that area A is just one minus two times the integral of zero to one of P squared. So I'm just gonna use the integral and find that. So this is one minus two times one over third P cubed, evaluated from one to zero, which is just one minus two third, which is one third or 0 0.33. And our Gini coefficient is 0 0.33. So again, this is just sort of the same formula with a discrete case, just using a continuous function and an integral instead. Again, if you've got specific questions or you want to see another example, feel free to put them in the comment section below. But if this video or these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.